What would you do with $100 a day? Would you save it, invest it, or perhaps quit your day job? It's a question you can start thinking about with these 10 websites that will pay you $100 a day and even more. 1. Lime On your way to work, to an event, or even out to the grocery store, you probably cross paths with a lime scooter. They are everywhere. In fact, at the very moment, they operate in 120 cities within 30 countries, and they are always expanding. So, if they've not hit your city yet, they most likely will soon. Since the company is gaining more users every day, they also need more juicers. This is the term they give to workers that recharge their scooters. Basically, as a juicer, you are given special charges by Lime to go and charge the scooter so it can be ready and good to go in the morning for their next client. The job is a competitive one that pays depending on the location of the scooter, which shows up on a city map created by Lime. Your job is to find the scooter, charge it, then return it by 7 a.m. fully charged. The pay per scooter can go as low as $3 and as high as $20. The trick is to charge several scooters simultaneously to make a decent amount of money. The average juicer easily makes about $100 a night, so get moving and start juicing. 2. Rover If you are a dog or a cat lover, this might just be your dream job. At Rover, you get paid to be a dog or a cat sitter. That's right, you get paid to watch and play with somebody else's pet. And it has other great benefits too. The great thing about this job is that you get to choose the hours, nights, and days when you want to work, and you can also choose how much you charge. If another person likes your profile and your experience with animals, they let you sit their dog and pay you for it. Currently, Rove has proved to be extremely successful. On average, sitters have worked part-time, taking care of two or three dogs during an on and off period of two weeks have made $1,000 per month. In contrast, sitters who have taken care of two to three dogs on a full-time basis for four weeks have reportedly made over $3,000. These kinds of numbers aren't at all shocking. We love and value our pets as family, so wouldn't it make all the sense in the world to trust our furry friends to the best care they can get? Become the best pet sitter here and you can make a nice income. 3. Fat Llama most of us, if not all of us, have a multitude of stuff lying around. This is usually stuff that you bought that was cool at the time, but now has lost its charm. And we all buy stuff that we thought we would use, but most of that sports equipment or new bicycle sits collecting dust. A place online called Fat Llama offers a unique service to help you make some profit off that stuff. Their website advertises itself with the tagline, Rent almost anything and they mean it. There you can find anything from video cameras, electric tools such as drills, helpful stuff you need once in a while like ladders, and even parking spaces in houses that can be rented here. You simply list the item for free and the price that you want to rent it for, which is per day. Of course, you can also choose to directly sell any object you have in case you just want to get rid of it. If you rent something, the company takes a 15% commission on your rent price, which is definitely fair since they offer a $30,000 insurance for any rental item in case it's lost, stolen, or damaged. Got some stuff sitting around that you could rent? Head to Fat Llama and make some cash off it today. 4. Flipper Flipping houses or rental properties are known to be one of the greatest investments there is. Its system is simple enough. You buy a house at a lower price and then quickly resell it again for a little more money than you paid for it by finding a hungry buyer for that property. But you can flip more than just houses, and online properties and websites can be just as hot. At Flipper, you can buy and sell any sort of website, app, or online business. The lowest prices are within the starter sites, which don't have any monthly revenue yet. These could be bid on from around $200 upwards. Then there are established sites with monthly revenue that can go from around $500 and into the thousands. Some websites can bring you an income without even touching the site. So don't worry about being a web programmer. The question now is, are you ready to start flipping? 
5. User testing All websites and apps need testing in order to detect bugs, errors and inconsistencies that cause problems for users or viewers that need them. The cool thing is that there are many websites that will pay good money to have someone perform those tests. At user testing, you can be the person who tests websites and applications. Simply sign up and record yourself testing particular aspects according to certain guidelines. Doing this can make you up to $60 per test. Those $60 tests are actually divided into milestones of $10. For every 20-minute video you record testing a company's website, you get paid $10. If you complete 10 of these videos, you'll have $100 for 3 hours and 20 minutes of your time. Not bad, is it? Best of all, you don't actually need any special or particular knowledge to complete these tests. Just a steady connection, some patience, and the ability to effectively communicate problems or bugs with sites and applications. 6. ACX Audiobooks are taking over the entire book industry, and Audible is ready to make you a part of it. You can be an author, narrator, publisher, or an agent, and all can make money here. Those that get the best deals are authors and narrators. As an author, you get 40% of the royalties of the sales of your book, plus overseeing and having complete freedom and choice in the production process, and you can even opt for a non-exclusive contract with Audible and still get 25% of royalties from sales. Audible takes care of distributing your produced audiobook on platforms such as their own, Audible website, as well as Amazon and iTunes. As a narrator, you could choose whether to be paid upfront or on a fixed per recorded hour rate, which can range from $90 to $250 depending on experience. Or you can opt to receive royalties along with the author, receiving 20% of the original 40% the author is offered by Audible. Either way, as an author or a narrator, chances to earn an incredibly healthy income are there, with many users making from $4,000 to $10,000 a month. 7. Fiverr If you think you can do something, anything, from completing a task to using some ability or talent, such as playing a musical instrument, chances are someone is willing to pay you to do it. At Fiverr, there are no small tasks and every task has a price. Some of the most well-known jobs can range from designing a banner or website to creating a bass guitar track for Davey 504. Anything can be asked for at Fiverr and everything is usually delivered. When signing up as a freelancer, you create a profile and start searching for gigs. From all the gigs that you get paid for, which range from $5 each to hundreds of dollars in some cases, Fiverr keeps 20% in commissions, but that won't stop you from making a good profit. Many freelancers get to make six figures on the site. It all boils down to dedication, consistency, and building a good reputation. 8. People Per Hour Another freelancing site is People Per Hour. As its title states, the aim of the site is to provide clients with people that can do jobs and get paid per hour. Distinct from Fiverr, People Per Hour targets the bigger jobs. Although you can find gigs as you would in Fiverr, there is a higher prevalence of long-time jobs and clients. In fact, the site fosters these long-time relationships with their fee system. At People Per Hour, there is a 20% commission on the first $350 earned with a client. So later on, charge a significantly reduced fee of 7.5%. On top of that, the site allows the freelancer to get paid in several currencies, including US dollars, euros, and pounds. While Fiverr is ranked as the 291st top visited website in the world, people per hour is far below in the scale. This fact when it comes to the online marketplace can be beneficial since there is less competition to get a job. And just like Fiverr, the chances of making a healthy income are definitely real and there. 9. Udemy Udemy is the largest online education platform in the world, with 30 million students worldwide so far and counting. The platform has all sorts of courses, ranging from website development and creative writing to successfully mastering being an Airbnb host. In other words, there are courses in all languages and subjects, and more likely than not, 
there is a place for you to teach anything you like and are passionate about. The key, like most online work, is to find a niche, something you are capable and knowledgeable about to teach others and organically grow a following. From every class of yours that gets sold, Udemy splits the revenues, keeping 50% and giving you the other 50%. The only case where the revenue split varies if the student presents an instructor's coupon or a course referral link, where you get to keep 97% of the revenues. Many instructors in Udemy make extremely healthy incomes, with some top instructors surpassing the $400,000 a year. This means that every single month, the instructors make over $33,000, and on a single day, they make over $1,100. If you haven't considered it before, maybe it's time to start thinking about creating a course. 10. Rapify Posting ads on social media or a blog can bring great revenue with time. But what if they paid you just to drive? At Rapify, the company pays you to wrap up your car with advertisement skins of your brand. And your sole obligation per contract is to drive a certain mileage per day, showcasing the brand. There are certain requirements to fulfill, like being at least 21 years old, own a coupe, sedan, SUV, pickup truck or minivan without any significant damage. And the car needs to be from 2010 or newer. Also, the company conducts a background check on the driver, mainly to verify that the driver hasn't been in a significant number of accidents during the past couple of years. The good news is that if you qualify to be a driver, you are looking into making up to $500 a month just to drive your usual commute. How great is that? We hope you enjoyed the video, and maybe some of you will try some of these websites to make $100 a day. If you have success, please let us know in the comments. And if we missed something out there, tell us about it. If you liked the video, please click the subscribe button and turn on notifications and be the first to know when a new video comes out. In 2020, Instagram, the second most popular social media platform in the world after Facebook, with approximately 1 billion active users, it's become a major platform for advertising and selling products and services. 90% of Instagram accounts follow at least one business or brand, and 80-plus percent of users have used Instagram to buy new products and services. Add into that the massive reach of influencers for marketing purposes, and you have a platform built for making money. Here are the five best ways to make money on Instagram. 1. Become an affiliate the first way you can make money using Instagram is probably the easiest and is therefore one of the most popular options. You can get into affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing basically means you promote other people's products in exchange for a small percentage of their revenue. It depends on people clicking links you post and then making purchases. You earn commission when people buy based on your recommendation. It's a common way of making money on Instagram and it's also very big in the blogging world. It's a great choice for anyone looking to get started making money on Instagram because it's relatively low effort and low risk. It's a form of passive income. Quick tip, passive income is money that is made without you doing any additional work once you've set up the revenue stream. It's how people make millions. Think residuals for sitcom stars or revenue for a shoe design that's already created if you can create passive income streams, you can make money while you sit on the bench sipping a pina colada. Back to affiliate marketing. All you need to do is get traffic to wherever your affiliate link is hosted and maintain a trustworthy enough brand that people who see it act on your recommendation. It's great because you don't have to run a store, you're not responsible for shipping or returns, and you don't even really need a huge audience or to be a top-tier influencer to make money this way. You'll just make more money the more your credibility and influence grows. The downside, of course, is that you typically make a pretty small percentage of total revenue, so it can be difficult to make large amounts of money over a sustained period of time. To become an affiliate marketer, you basically need to establish yourself as interested in a particular topic or kind of product using your Instagram, and, if possible, though not strictly necessary, a connected website, 
blog, or YouTube channel. It can be done these days exclusively with Instagram by using stories, video posts, or just long descriptions and relevant images in your feed. But because Instagram doesn't allow links in its posts, you'll either have to register as a brand Instagram, use promoted posts, or stick to one or two links at a time, making use of your bio. That's if you go Insta only. Once you're established, no need to be famous. Just create a solid track record. Sign up with Amazon Associates and you'll be able to grab an affiliate link for any product available on Amazon. Pretty cool, right? If you want to drive more traffic to your links, building out a more robust system of covert link delivery can make a difference. For example, you could create an email list or make educational Instagram stories or an IGTV video series that keeps people coming back and checking out your latest info. 2. Sell dropship products Another common way to make money on Instagram is by becoming a dropshipper. This means basically that you own a virtual store that sells physical products made and shipped by someone else. You run the store and are responsible for handling refunds and returns, but the inventory is held elsewhere and you have a manufacturer or supplier who handles the physical shipping. You have more responsibility than an affiliate marketer, but the work you do is almost 100% virtual. You're essentially a middleman between someone else's product and your customers. If you don't already have one, you'll want to set up a Shopify store or a store on another similar platform designed for dropshipping to connect you with inventory and make dropshipping easy and breezy. If you're new to the dropshipping world, using all the tools you can to simplify the process is very wise because it can get a little hairy. The cool thing is that with Shopify, you can then import your product list straight to a Facebook shop, which then allows you to set up a shop directly on Instagram. It's a really cool, relatively new feature on Instagram. People can buy things from your store directly using the Instagram shop feature. This is an excellent option if you're focusing your marketing on Instagram because it keeps the process super simple for your consumers. Dropshipping is great because it's fairly low effort, high reward. You make a higher percentage on sold products than affiliate marketers with little to no investment of your own. However, there are a few downsides. Since you're not in direct control of the product and can't be there to see how things are made and shipped, you're leaving the quality of products you're selling in your company's name up to someone else. You don't have control over packaging and sometimes the manufacturers will change suppliers for specific aspects of the product without telling you, resulting in you receiving complaints from customers when the end product looks different or is of a lesser quality than you or your customers expect. 3. Sell Products Directly Which brings us to the next option for making money using Instagram, selling your own products. That is, you're an actual store selling physical or digital products directly to your customers. You handle holding on to inventory, shipping and returns. This is a lot more work than the previous two options, but it gives you a lot more control over your brand, the quality of what you sell and the method and timing of shipping. This is also a great option if you make your own products. This would also be the standard method for anyone offering digital instead of physical products like templates or courses. It works essentially the same, at least on Instagram, as dropshipping. You can make great use of the Instagram shop feature. The primary difference comes in what happens after a product is sold. Instead of an order being passed along to someone else, you do everything. This also means, with physical products, it's your job to keep tabs on inventory and order, or make additional products in a timely fashion so you don't end up without inventory when an order is made by a consumer. This also means you have to put more of your own money in upfront. But the upside is that, with a few exceptions, you keep all the profits. With digital products that don't need to be individually tailored and can just be sent directly to the purchaser, this method of Instagram money making also creates passive income, which again is a very big thing if you want to get rich. Basically, no one makes significant money without passive income. 4. Sell your photography 
This method of making money on Instagram overlaps with some of your other options. The key difference being that, in this case, instead of making ads for or reviewing products on your Instagram, your Instagram itself is essentially the product. This method is best for photographs and artists. You can monetize the images on your Instagram in a wide variety of different ways. But regardless of what products or services you choose to sell, the content of your Instagram is the star. If your photography or cartoons or other designs are a hit on Instagram, you can start selling posters, tote bags, commissions for original work, digital downloads, and even parlay your popularity into a book deal. And then you can sell the book using your Instagram. This way of making money gets its own section for a few reasons. One is that it's really, in a matter of ways, what Instagram is best for. Instagram is a visually driven medium, so your speciality is visually driven products. It's really the place for you. Plus, how you choose to sell those products can make use of any and all of the other methods on this list. You can drop ship t-shirts, work with a manufacturer to create a shirt and then have them handle printing and shipping. You can sell original artwork from your studio. You can use affiliate marketing to ask people to buy your book, assuming it's published by a big publishing house rather than self-published by you, and so on and so forth. The difference from other methods is, instead, in the marketing method and content of your Instagram. 5. Become an influencer Last, but certainly not least, there's the most famous and perhaps the most difficult way to make money on Instagram – becoming an influencer. To do this, you have to get famous. How you get famous is up to you. Maybe you have an incredible talent. Maybe your incredible talent is being really hot. Regardless of how you do it, you'll need to get at least tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of followers before you can really make this work. But once you do, you can leverage those followers, use your influence to sell things. The influencer-specific way of making money is through sponsorships and sponsored posts. Instead of selling products, you sell yourself and space on your Instagram to brands. Those brands then pay you money to say you like what they do. Whether they make sports beverages or fine knitting wools or nuclear weapons, major influencers can make thousands of dollars for a single positive mention of a product. If you are lucky enough to end up in this position, you may be approached by brands, and your job is to decide which of them you actually are willing to put your name behind. The biggest challenge is choosing products that you can support without losing credibility with your followers. If you recommend a bad product, people will be less likely to listen to you in the future, which will diminish the value of your brand and future sponsored posts. But gee, it's not a bad problem to have. And those are the five very best ways to make money using Instagram. Whichever of these money-making methods you choose, there are a few things you can do to make selling via Instagram easier. You need to build a profile before you start selling, so you have a robust enough Instagram presence to seem trustworthy. You should make use of relevant hashtags to get your content seen by a wider audience. They'll be interested in what you do. You should spend some time getting involved in the relevant Instagram community to build credibility and personal relationships. You should make engaging and unique content and post often. You should collaborate with influencers and accounts in your niche and, once you have enough clout that you know any money you invest in ads can be made back, you can and should use Instagram's paid ads where appropriate. And that's just about everything you need to know about how to make money on Instagram. What do you think? Would you try it? Do you have a great idea you think you could use to make money on Instagram? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe for more info. You can make big money just by using Pinterest. Interested? Today, we'll be taking a look. Since its inception in 2010, Pinterest has been a popular social media platform for fashion, food, and DIY projects. But did you know you can also make money on Pinterest? In fact, you can make as much as $100 a day using Pinterest. And today, we're going to tell you how. And the best part? You don't need any special expertise to make it happen. And once you're rolling, you won't even need to put in much effort. So, if you enjoy pinning, hang tight. 
with 300 million users and growing. Pinterest is ripe with opportunities for would-be entrepreneurs. People may think of it as an image sharing and social media site, but it's really a link sharing site driven by visuals. Now that you understand that, you can start to understand how you can use Pinterest to create a source of passive income on the side. In fact, those who really know what they're doing can make tens of thousands of dollars by leveraging this incredible platform. Even smaller pinners that know how to monetize can make as much as $10,000 a month. Like Finn Savvy Panda, an account with less than a million followers and monthly viewers run by a woman named Ling, who very kindly shared her monthly income and growth numbers over the course of the past few years on her blog. So you can only imagine what someone with 10 times the reach of Ling, top users like Joy Cho, could make on the platform. All you need in order to make it happen for you is a little bit of know-how, an eye for content, and a little time to learn the ropes and get set up. To make money on Pinterest, you won't need much, but you'll most likely need a business Pinterest account, which is free to sign up for. If you're not already big into Pinterest, you'll want to familiarize yourself with how the platform works and what kind of pins do well before getting started. But beyond that, it's easy to do. And once you're up and running, you can start to make hundreds, if not thousands of dollars a month for little to no work. Let's take a look at the seven ways you can make money using Pinterest. One, blogging. One of the most popular ways to start making money using Pinterest is to use it to direct traffic to a blog. Here's how that would work. First, you'll need to create a blog and make five to 10 good long informative posts. Your blog can be about whatever you want, whatever you're interested in or know something about, or even something you don't know anything about yet. If you're willing to take the time to do some reading and learn, then write up the posts. The best case is that you choose something you know and care about, so you can keep creating more content down the line without it becoming a huge burden to you. That said, some people hire freelancers to write their blog posts for them. It costs a little, but further reduces your personal time investment. You'll need to use Google AdSense, at least at first, to add monetized advertisements to your blog, so that whenever someone clicks through to your blog, you make money from the ads. Google AdSense is great because it has no minimum monthly views for you to start making money. However, once your website is getting a lot of traffic, you can upgrade to a better advertising and affiliate program so you can make more money per click. But that's a problem for down the line. First, you need to figure out how to send traffic to that blog, and that's where Pinterest comes in. You'll want to start pinning content related to what your blog is about with links to your different posts. If you want to, you can create original graphics using online tools like Canva. You can take your own photographs, or you can use free online photo resources like unsplash.com. It's best if you engage with other related content creators on Pinterest and join group boards to help bolster your content and get seen. And it's important that you write relevant captions for the images you share on Pinterest that aren't too jammed with keywords, so people can find you and get a sense for your brand. Basically, you want to create content people want to share and want to click through to see more of. If you do all that, you'll be sending traffic to your blog in no time and making money. It could take some time to pick up and you'll need to stay on it and share content regularly if you want to create the big kind of Pinterest presence that makes thousands. But even just making these first few posts and then sharing links to them a few times can start to make you small amounts of money each month. To grow to several million followers and start making thousands of dollars, you'll need to do more of the things on this list and hustle a little harder. But if you love to share eye-catching content, it won't feel like work at all. Now, let's look at your next option. Two, affiliate marketing. Since Pinterest is, again, basically a big link sharing site, a fairly easy way to start making passive income using Pinterest is to become an affiliate marketer. This is, essentially, when you share an affiliate link to someone else's product. When people see your content, click the link and buy the product, you get a commission off the sale, 
and no extra cost to the consumer. It's a win-win situation for you and your followers. The best way to do this is by linking to your blog or website and then having the affiliate links on your site. But it can be done without starting a blog or website at all by simply creating pins that link directly to your affiliates. That said, if you decide to go the route of posting affiliate links directly to Pinterest, there are a number of rules you have to follow. Basically, you have to be as transparent as possible, labeling that it's an affiliate link and not masking or shortening the link. And you may have to contact the company whose affiliate link you're posting to get their specific rules about affiliate marketing on Pinterest. For example, Amazon doesn't let you use their images of products for affiliate marketing on Pinterest. And, in fact, the FTC requires you to be upfront about the fact that you have an affiliate relationship. So, even on your blog, it would be wise to put a disclaimer in. But none of this should stop you from doing it. Just make sure you know the rules and follow them. Lots of people buy things through affiliate links. You might as well be one of the people benefiting from that system, especially if you have good taste and love to use Pinterest. 3. Create Shop the Look Pins This one's similar in many ways to affiliate marketing links, but it uses a special Pinterest tool and has slightly different rules. To make Shop the Look Pins, you'll definitely need a business account. But the good news is that you can spend a lot less time worrying about how you tag your posts. They're upfront about being sales-driven. All you need is photos of things you love, which you'll then tag with white dots to link to different products, affiliate or otherwise. This is a great tool because, with one post, you can link to your own blog or website, use affiliate marketing links for other people's products, and link to products of your own that you make sell or dropship. All you need is a relevant image. The biggest challenge here is getting pictures that fit the bill. You'll need to create your own photos, get permission to use existing photos of the products in question, or find images you can use that feature similar products. 4. Sell original graphics Moving on to something that takes marginally more skill, though not by much. If you have an eye for graphic design, or have a photo studio or do product photos, you can get into making pins, not just for yourself but for others too, and make some money doing it. This can be as simple as adding text or fixing up a layout of existing images, or as involved as getting into original photography. But if you have an eye for creating click-worthy pins, you can start offering your services to brands, creators, and even other small blogs who want to start making money using Pinterest. If you can provide a service they don't know how to do, you can make extra money just using your skills and your sense for what will work on Pinterest. This is an especially great option for graphic designers. We suggest you start small with just one or two clients. If you're not already in the freelance realm, you can use sites like Fiverr or make graphics advertising your services to post on Pinterest. If you have success and find you like it, you can make a good business out of making pins, not just for yourself but for others who need it. 5. Sell your own products Next up, we have an option that's great for the makers of the world. You can sell your own services or products using Pinterest, and no need to spend money on promoted posts unless you want to make a targeted effort to expand your reach down the line. All you'll have to do is create a Pinterest presence and start posting images of what you do and pins that support what you do with links to your online store. If you make something physical, like pillowcases or artwork, it's easy to simply get nice photographs of your products. You may even already have those if you're established in your brand off Pinterest. Post them with relevant keywords and hashtags and let people discover you. Of course, the more you engage and the harder you work to build your audience, the more engagements you'll have and more sales you'll make. But simply doing the work of making good posts and sharing them can bolster your Pinterest reach so you can make money. This also works for service-based providers like copywriters, consultants and coaches. 
The only difference is that your primary content will be graphics related to your offerings. So, instead of photos of mugs, you'll be posting original graphics of favorite quotes, meditations, advice, and so on. Hot tip! If you're interested in making sure you're using Pinterest as effectively as possible, one of the best things you can do is to invest in some current resources on techniques for making use of Pinterest. Spending $10 or $20 on a well-reviewed ebook and a couple of hours reading will be a very worthwhile investment, if it can, and for the record, it can, help you lead to $1,000 or more per month in passive income from Pinterest. 6. Do joint promotions with brands Once you've started to build a sizable following on Pinterest and had some success using it, you can start working with brands to do joint promotions or shared Pinterest boards. This opportunity is one that will come a little later, but if you can get to this level, you can make some serious bank using just Pinterest. This option is great if you can get it, because instead of your payout being click or commission based, brands will usually pay you a flat fee for the collaboration. Essentially, they're paying for the exposure to your audience. You provide the eyes, and what the consumer then does is their problem, not yours. Of course, you still want to put your best foot forward. You want your collaborations to be successful. That way, they can open the door to future projects to help you make more money and help more people find solutions to their needs, whatever your niche may be. 7. Become a Pinterest virtual assistant or consultant Last, but certainly not least, you can get paid to pin for someone else. While Pinterest doesn't pay people to pin, brands and influencers who are expected to pin but may not have the time to do it themselves will often hire virtual assistants to do the pinning for them. This means you would log in as them and find and create pins that fit their brand. When you pin for someone else, you have to learn their likes and dislikes and pin appropriately. But if you like to pin, it could be a fun job. Plus, VAs can make pretty decent hourly rates just to sit at home in their pajamas and pin. And if you have some success and learn how to grow an audience pinning for other people and yourself, you can even become a Pinterest consultant. Instead of making the pins yourself or doing the pinning, you would meet with bloggers, shop owners, brands, and so on to look at their Pinterest presence and guide them as to how they can build their audience. Some steps they can take for more engagement and advice on how to improve their content for the current Pinterest market. Or if they're not on Pinterest yet, your job would be to help them come up with a strategy and look for their Pinterest page. To get this kind of gig, you'll have to build up your expertise and air of authority. But if you like to pin, you can make hundreds of dollars in just a few hours for high-level consulting work like that. And remember, not everyone likes or wants to learn about Pinterest. By solving their problem for them and telling them how to proceed or doing the pinning for them, you might feel like you're getting away with something. Being paid to pin, but for your clients, you're serving a vital purpose they couldn't or didn't want to have to deal with themselves. Another win-win situation. So, in summary, can you make money on Pinterest? Absolutely! Our biggest tips are to use free tools like Canva to make your own graphics, read resources on marketing via Pinterest, make sure you read the rules so you don't end up in hot water, and then just have fun with building yourself a healthy side hustle using one of the most popular social sites out there today. Do your best to provide value, make good content, and be patient. If you can manage that, you will start a following and start to make money. If you do those things and choose a few of these seven methods to make money on Pinterest, you'll be seeing the cash roll in sooner than you know it. While many Pinterest-based businesses start slow and nothing or $50 to a few hundred dollars a month, once you're well-established, you can make $1,000 a month, with top earners making as much as $10,000 a month. Worth it? You tell us. Sound off in the comments to let us know if you're excited by this and love to pin. Or if you think this all sounds like a little too much work for you. Pinterest is continuing to grow, so there's no sign of opportunities drying up anytime soon. But be warned, they do like to change the rules now and then, 
so stay on top of your strategy and consider diversifying platforms. You can check out our videos about making money on YouTube and Instagram, for example, if you want to make sure your income stream isn't limited by the decisions of any one company. And after some time, you could be making an impressive income, hundreds of thousands a year, using just the internet and a little bit of time. Liked this video? Give us a thumbs up and let us know, and subscribe below so you can keep learning new ways to earn money every day. When we think about YouTubers, we usually think of the people at the top of their game, people with millions of subscribers and views. We assume they're making big money from their high view counts, but how much can you actually earn from a YouTube channel? Keep watching this video to find out how the system works, who the top earners are, and how much you can realistically expect to make if you start your own channel. How it works First, let's talk about YouTube's rules for when you can start earning money and how much you earn from your channel. In order to make money from YouTube ads on your YouTube channel, you need to be a part of the YouTube Partner Program and have a Google AdSense account. You become eligible for these things when your channel has 1,000 subscribers and you have 4,000 valid public watch hours over the past 12 months. Valid public watch hours basically means a variety of real people watching your publicly listed videos for 4,000 hours, which is to say that you can't just watch 4,000 hours of your own channel and get monetized, and you can't count unlisted videos toward your view count. You also have to live in a country where the program is available, which is a little over 100 of the world's 195 countries, and you have to agree to abide by a set of policies, which you can read on Google AdSense's facts page about the program, if you're so inclined. If you already have a channel, YouTube will notify you when you become eligible for the program. Once you're a part of the YouTube Partner Program, or YPP, you get access to a bunch of features, including a dashboard that shows you how your channel is doing and your estimated ad revenue. The main screen shows you numbers on a monthly basis, but you can choose to display year-to-date and all-time figures to get a sense of your month-to-month -month growth. Loosely speaking, creators make around one cent per view, with some variation for bigger and smaller channels and a wide variety of other factors, but we'll get into that later. In particular, YouTubers only get paid per monetized view, which make up between 40 and 80% of all YouTube views, and that percentage can make a pretty big difference in how much a channel makes. So, while online calculations often estimate the paid rate per view at 1.8 cents based on what advertisers pay and percentage of that reserved for content creators, for many YouTubers, it's actually one cent or lower. For the purposes of this video, and for easier math, We'll say that the average is around one cent per view. All that said, most YouTubers actually only make a portion of their income from YouTube ad revenue. The ones that pull in the most cash on an annual basis have typically monetized their influence in other ways, say by selling products directly or by creating product lines with major brands, and by doing sponsored videos. That is, making deals directly with marketers who want to be featured in a specific way on their specific social channels. This could be through product placement, trying out a new pair of pants and plugging them in, or by showing off a new Ferrari and talking about how great it is. Okay, that last one is specifically about David Dobrik, but it could happen to any of us. Sort of. Many creators also use affiliate marketing to make money, providing links for viewers to purchase products made and sold by someone else in exchange for a commission on those products when they sold using that link. So, with all that in mind, let's take a look at how much the top YouTubers make. Then we'll talk about some best practices for how you can make money off your own YouTube channel. Top YouTube Earners The top 10 YouTube moneymakers of 2019 according to CNBC, were Ryan Kaji, Dude Perfect, Anastasia Radzinskaya, Rhett and Link, Jeffree Star, Preston, PewDiePie, Markiplier, Dan TDM, and Vanos Gaming. Altogether, they brought in an incredible $162 million over a 12-month period. Ryan Kaji, the eight-year-old star of the channel now called Ryan's World, formerly Ryan Toys Reviews, topped the list at a whopping $26 million in income for 2019. The channel, at present, has over 23 million subscribers, 
and as of 2019, was garnering roughly 1 billion views per month. Incredible. Now, at one cent per view, that would net Ryan and family about $10 million for the year. Not bad at all. But his income for the year was much higher, and that's where those other income streams we talked about come into play. Now, Ryan being one of the most popular YouTubers on the planet means that his endorsement or involvement in something is worth more than most YouTubers, or even celebrities in general. For a little perspective, Ryan's videos get more views in a month than the 2019 Super Bowl received in total. And not just a little bit more, 850 million more. So, all of that is to say, it's really no wonder that Kaji has garnered the attention and funding of some major brands. He has a deal with Hulu, a show on Nickelodeon, and his own brand of toys, clothing, and home goods that's sold at major retailers. And Ryan's not the only one. Many YouTubers make as much as 50% of the money that comes in based on their channel from places other than their channel itself. Jeffree Star, who made $17 million last year, has his makeup line. Rhett and Link have a whole entertainment company and lifestyle brand called Mythical. In fact, PewDiePie remained in the top 10 highest paid YouTubers for 2019 despite winding down his YouTube presence before ultimately taking a break, coming in at $13 million with 4 billion views for the year, plus book sales, merch sales, sponsorships and mobile game downloads. Realistically though, most YouTubers never make it to those heights. Is it worth it? Let's take a look. Making income from a medium-sized channel Now. Those are some of the heavy hitters, but even relatively smaller channels can make good money. For example, Graham Stephan, who has about 1.5 million subscribers as of this posting, can make as much as $160,000 in a month based on his videos about his income. In fact, Stephan makes super handy videos when he hits major milestones, showing viewers about his traffic and YouTube-related income, so we'll use his channel to talk about this level of channel. Graham's videos are also incredibly helpful because they describe the nuances of who makes more or less money from ad revenue by breaking down parts of the YouTube monetization process that outsiders might not have access to. It turns out length of video and watch time, that is, how many minutes viewers actually stay and watch a video, make a big difference, as do the type of content in those videos and any use of copyrighted material. If you use a copyrighted song in your video, some of the ad revenue from that video will go to the owner of that copyright. If people watch more of your videos, you can make more money. If you have more subscribers and are ergo in higher demand from advertisers, you make more money. His videos actually give us an excellent example of this last point, because early in 2019, when he had less subscribers, Graham made approximately $103,000 for almost 10.3 million views. Pretty good. However, in his most recent video, his dashboard shows that he's making almost $130,000 for just 7.7 .7 million views. This is pretty incredible growth. He started the channel in 2016 with no real built-in audience or expectations. Obviously, his following has grown significantly over time. However, Perhaps the most interesting point that he makes is that the type of content you post also affects how much money you can make, again, based on audience and demand. Let's take a closer look at that, because this can be a big deal for you, if you're hoping to start and grow a YouTube channel and you're still deciding what it'll look like. Videos with profanity, gore, sexual content, anything that makes them not family-friendly, are in lower demand for ad sales than G-rated content. Beyond that, your sector and type of content you post also make a difference. So, someone who posts financial advice or someone who reviews cars will de facto make more money than, say, a sketch comedy channel aimed at college students, all things being equal in terms of their subscriber base and view count numbers. That's because the primary audiences for car and finance videos have more spending power and are more likely to spend money on advertised products than the college student target audience of the comedy channel. So, if you're good at comedy, but you also have a passion for tech, focus your channel on tech and use the money that comes rolling in to make your passion projects. Stefan also reaffirms what we've been talking about in terms of YouTubers making money from other streams than just ads. 
In fact, he goes so far as to say that funds from YouTube ads are really just a drop in the bucket relative to other money-making opportunities. According to Graham, partnering with brands for video sponsorship can garner creators thousands of dollars. Smaller channels a few thousand dollars, the bigger channels almost as much as $125,000. But again, Graham has over a million followers, which is still a pretty high bar to hit. So let's go even smaller. Channels with less than 10,000 followers. Shrinking to an even smaller scale, Marissa Lyder, originally known as The Budgeting Wife, kindly made a video about her real-time stats when her channel was at just 8,000 followers. At the time, she was making a little over $400 a month in ad revenue, plus an additional almost $600 a month in other product sales related to her YouTube channel, making up to about $1,000 per month or $12,000 per year. While that's nowhere near the millions the people at the top are pulling in, it's still way beyond respectable for a side hustle. Plus, Marissa has since grown her channel to over 32,000 followers, proving that making content you believe in and that's personal to you and steadily growing your base over time is an effective way to build your channel and start making money from what you love. If what you love happens to include making YouTube videos. What does this all mean for you? So, what are the lessons you can take away and apply to your own channel? First, growing an audience takes time and there are minimums you have to meet before you start making money. Second, content matters. Choose what kind of channel you want to be wisely. Advertisers care what you say and do, and the content of your channel can make a difference in your income options long term. The most popular and well-paid sectors on YouTube seem to be gaming, finance, beauty, children's content, pets and food. But that doesn't necessarily mean those are your only options. Choose something you care about enough to make videos every week for several years. Third, when your channel does grow, don't just rely on ad money if you really want to make your fortune. Create a whole business plan around your content, whether it's a product line, a series of classes viewers can download, an Amazon store where you can make use of affiliate marketing or merchandise featuring your derpy dog. And finally, if and when you do make money on YouTube, be wise with it. It's an industry with a lot of variables and you never know when your revenue could drop, so invest wisely, save vigorously and pay your taxes on time. And that's everything you need to know about how much YouTubers earn and how they use it. What do you think? Could you pull off your own channel? Is this more money than creators are worth? Sound off in the comments and don't forget to smash those like and subscribe buttons down below if you want more videos like this.